Hey guys, so in this video I want to show what I believe is the best and most optimal way to warm up. Since I've had more time to play, I've been trying out different warm up courses and routines that I've seen on YouTube or from pro players. I basically took the best and most helpful parts from each of their routines I saw and made it my own. So just for fair warning, I usually warm up for like 30 to 45 minutes. I know there's going to be some people who are about to comment, I can only play for 30 minutes lol. In that case, I'm not even sure why you're watching this video. A legitimate and actual useful warm up will take a minimum of 15 minutes and at that point it probably won't even warm you up that much. And for the other clowns who are going to comment, Imagine actually warming up to play Fortnite. <laughs> you do realize that the prize pool for the World Cup is over 30 million dollars, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. Anyways, I'm going to trim my entire warm up down so it's not actually 45 minutes. Also talk about what I try to work on while warming up and why it helps in game. So this won't be in the exact order that I warm up, but let's start with some free building, which in my opinion is the most important thing that you should warm up. I literally just go into a creative game and hop into a blank rift. Let me know if this happens to you guys though, but even if I play for a few hours the day before, there will be some days where I just hop on and I can't build to save my life. My keyboard feels foreign, my keybinds just feel awkward and bad, and I build like a complete bot. The only thing that you can actually do to get used to building again and to warm it up is to simply build. I'll start with some simple 90s to the right and left. I want to focus on builds I use in game as well as builds that will get my fingers and hands warm, which are just building drills and techniques that use as many keybinds as possible. 90s do exactly this and they're always useful for high ground retakes. I usually do the simple clockwise 90s and then switch over to metro 90s. Technically my 90s are not optimal, I know. I only hold down W when I should be holding down W and D while going to the right. Beaks and Ghost Bizzle have amazing videos on the subject and how directional momentum affects your 90 speed. The problem is that my floor bind is on F and my wall bind is on Q, so this just means that I can't hold down W and A or W and D together while building because my index finger, which should be holding down D while doing 90s, is instead hitting my floor bind. And the same thing for my ring finger but with my A key and walls. Optimal or not though, 90s are a great way for warming up your builds. You can do EU 90s or Bizzle 90s or whichever 90s your heart desires. I might make a full length video on optimal 90s, but just know that I know that mine are not optimal. The important part though is that you're using them to warm up. Also make sure that you're practicing 90s to the left and to the right because you'll never know which you'll have to use in games and in fights. Next thing I'll do is protected ramp rushes and then I'll edit through the right protected ramp. The two edits are pretty difficult to consistently pull off which is not only a good challenge but they're also two of the most useful edits that you'll do in game. Editing a ramp back and then editing through a wall, you basically use this every single game that you play. The two edits combined are also very useful in game if you ramp in front of someone and then edit through to surprise them for a kill. Plus it looks really cool and it's insanely clean which means you could throw it in your montage and then brag about how goaded you are to all your friends. Hashtag chronic RC. This also uses all of your building binds except cones, so your fingers are getting really warmed up at this point. Something I'll occasionally do is combine some 90s with some protected ramp rushes and then editing through. This will really get you warmed up and is much harder than just doing only 90s or ramp rushes. Now we're going to start using cones a little bit by coning and then flooring our double ramps and then editing through. If you can't build floors and cones together yet, just start with cones and then slowly work your way towards getting the floors in there as well. It's important to practice floors and cones together because when you're up against a good player, they'll just floor your cones if you're trying to take high ground by editing through only cones. So by placing your floors and cones yourself, they can't block you off and then you can edit through to get high ground while protected. To spice it up, you can edit through the cone, then reset the cone edit, and edit the cone into a ramp going in the opposite direction you came. This is not that useful for actual games, but it will help get down your editing and resetting edits without scroll wheel warmed up. After that, I'll do some scissor ramps with cones, and then do the bizzle high ground retake where you floor beneath you, to the side, and then scissor ramp up again using the cone you placed above you. You can throw thwifo cones in there as well, and do the retake to the left and to the right to throw the guy on high ground off. This really helps warm up your movement as you have to be positioned correctly to platform under you and keep moving up and out while scissor ramping after you pull off the high ground retake move. This also looks super clean in game and is one of the most simple yet effective high ground retakes that you can do. 
To practice even more cones and warming up your movement even more, I'll then practice jumping off a cone onto a floor that's a level above on a wall, and then floor and cone in front so you can do the same thing over and over again. What you're doing here is practicing Doug Dimmodomes, so if you're just to place the floor and cone in front of you, you could get a clear shot on someone trying to ramp over you from the other way. The person trying to ramp over you wouldn't be able to do it because you place the cone there, and that's essentially what the Dimmodome is. You can also edit the cone you place after you jump, and then Dimmodome again, and repeat the same building pattern. This helps your editing as well as staying on height while dimmodoming, so you can just edit and keep height if someone was to keep building. This combines pretty much everything and warms up your edits, movement, jumps, cones, and just overall building. The last building drill I'll do is tunneling and I'll practice it when I know I'm going to play arena or do custom scrims of any sort. I'll start with some simple tunnels with protection to the left obviously to block any fire from the left if I were rotating in game. Then I'll practice to the right and then both sides. You can practice the epic whale tunnels with only ramps, but they're not as hard to pull off, so you're more or less just practicing getting down the angle for placing the ramp. I'll also practice tunneling to the left and right with a wall in front. You'll probably use this tunneling technique in game more than any others because you'll have people in front of you, to the side and above. Lastly, I'll just practice bizzle diagonal tunnels, which kind of wraps up the tunneling section and puts it all together. That's the building warm-up section that I do just to get my fingers warmed up and used to pressing all my keybinds again. It also helps warm up the builds you'll actually use in-game, and techniques that you'll use in World Cup qualifiers, arena matches, and scrims. The next thing I'll do is warm up my editing, which I don't really have a set map for. I honestly just look at different edit courses on YouTube and try out a different one every other day or so. The problem with a lot of them is that they focus too much on repetitive edits that you won't ever really use in-game or half the course will be doing 90s and random crap that you won't ever use. The one edit map that I always find myself going back to is the original map that I used from my warm-up video from like five months ago, Kanduk's advanced edit course. He actually just remastered it and it brings back the nostalgia of grinding his course on like 1280 by 1024 or whatever insane stretch resolution that I was playing at the time. It's very similar to the original course that he made but he did change some things around. I love how practical and really just applicable the whole course and edits are to actual games. The edits aren't that tough but they do a good job of warming up the wall and stair edits that you'd use in a match. There is some building and some aiming involved. I think there's one 90 section and then a small AR aim section, but the majority of the course is just editing. The whole thing should take you like three or four minutes, so I usually run through it twice. You can focus on speed or just trying out and practicing new edits. What I do is I usually just warm up the edits that I know I'll use in game. Whatever it may be though, just make sure that you're actually warming up your editing. This course is what I've personally been using, but you could also use Mongrels or Slappies or Floodaholics. They're all great as well. Any edit course really does work. The idea is that you just want to warm up for 5-10 to 10 minutes by spamming edits and getting your edit finger warmed up. The last thing, which is really the first thing that I do to warm up, is Kovacs. Kovacs is the aim trainer that basically every pro player uses. I'm not sponsored by them at all. I wish I was. Feels bad, man. But I think it's the best aim trainer around. To warm up, I don't do any tile frenzy scenarios or anything like that. Those scenarios are very good for improving your hipfire aim and your flicks. But I usually warm up with only ascended tracking v3. Reason is, in Fortnite, a majority of the aiming you do is tracking aim. Yes, you'll use your shotgun for flicks and stuff like that, but a majority of the time, the person you're fighting will be moving and not stationary. How many times a game do you ever shoot someone who's standing still? Rarely ever, and if you do, you don't really need to practice hitting someone who's not moving. With your AR, you're tracking. With your sniper, you're tracking. When you're hipfire spraying with an SMG, you're tracking. And even with shotgun shots, a lot of the time you're tracking, especially if you're above or below them. Ascended tracking is by far the best tracking practice that you can get on PC. Focus on your accuracy and just getting your aim warmed up while playing. You can use your hipfire sense and then ADS with right click so you can warm up both your hipfire and your ADS tracking. If you can't buy Kovacs and you're on PC, then you could try Osu, which is a free alternative and is very good for warming up your tracking game as well. If you're on console, you should use Gearsy's aim training course, which Tifu and Symphony actually use to warm up a lot. I would go to the tracking aim section and just warm up your tracking aim there. You can also do the flick section, but again, I think if you're looking for the most efficient and effective warm up possible, focus on your tracking. So basically my warm up is I'll start with Kovacs and do that for 10 to 15 minutes. Then I'll do the building drills I showed for like 2 or 3 minutes each, which is another 15 minutes. Sometimes I'll skip the editing course and just start playing, but if my editing is feeling a little rusty, I'll do that course for like 10 minutes. So the warm up overall should take anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes. 
you don't necessarily need to warm up before you play, but I like to think of a warm up like people do in real sports. Yes, you can just play basketball and get right into the game, but there's a reason that NBA players get to the arena like three hours before a game. They hydrate, they shoot around, they stretch, they practice dunks and some half court games before they actually play. Obviously, playing a basketball game is a lot different than sitting in a chair and playing a video game, but the overall concept is still very similar. Whether or not you want to warm up is up to you, but if you're looking to win as soon as you hop into a game, especially if it's arena or world cup qualifiers, then you should warm up and you should follow my routine. If my routine did help you guys and you're going to use it, be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and to turn on post notifications. Thank you to everyone who's using my code. I love you all. Otherwise, that's it from me and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.